Hey guys, Joshua Peterson here, Peterson Electric. I thought I'd do a YouTube video for you guys here on static electricity. We are uh, driving to our soccer practice and um, reading to our kids about our homeschool for electricity. Not that this would be a good subject to do for homeowners because I've got a lot of calls upon this. Uh, the video is going to be rated for my SEO guys, Static Electricity, in September 2020. And here is the page that's going to read out of Delmar's book, Chapter 4. Static electricity is done by natural things in nature, such as lightning. It's not always that you have lightning from, ground, from sky to ground. It also is ground up. Lightning rods are installed at times, not on typical combustible roofs, but maybe a metal roof or a metal building. Then it talks about man-made items such as automobiles and they have chains that drag. And then personal static electricity that happens on uh, people's bodies as they walk across the carpet. You will discharge at times based upon touching a switch or an outlet at times. And then there's other nylon that is going to be definitely a man-made material that will statically charge. In the winter, some climates like Colorado are drier, get low humidity, and static charge will accumulate on clothes and therefore discharge on your fabric. One example is to hold a key or a coin in your hand. So. If you're giving us a call wondering if you're getting electrocuted, here's the bottom line. If you touch something metal and discharge once, you should not be able to do it again twice, most likely. But if you got balloons in your house for a birthday party, or kids are rubbing it on their hair and the static's hanging, and their hair standing up from static, or they're gonna their clothes are energizing. I've also seen because of carpet being so old and cleaned over and over again with soap. But realize in Colorado, we are very, very dry climbing. You come out here and you'll literally crack up overnight if you're from the Hawaii Islands. So the point of the matter is in the winter, we are a lot drier. You think with moisture and sun and, and just our, uh, snow coming down and rain in the fall would help. Not as much. But when we get a very dry climate, so there are certain seasons here in Colorado, you will get dis, uh, you'll feel a lot more static discharge. The reason why that's happening is because if you have a three-wire circuit on an outlet plug, not a two-wire, very important to understand, you probably get more static shock having a good grounding system in your home. This might be 1960s and early, or later, or earlier to us, sorry. So basically, when that EGC grounded conductor is touching the yoke of the strap in the 632 on a nylon plate, that's the best thing to have in the house is a nylon plate. Those two 632 screws, although painted, will still discharge. If they're silver, then they're really gonna discharge quicker. Some people have metal plates in their house. Sometimes the faceless plates is the better way to go. But if you're finding that you're getting a lot of static, maybe you just need to clean your house a little bit more from your dogs because of hair. Other than that, having a clean house as well as a good clean vacuum will help out, but tumbling clothes in a dryer, as you walk up to touch that dryer, can discharge. When your ground wire for your dryer is four wire versus three, that ground will definitely take that EGC that branch circuit back to the panel to your ground bar. Through a sub panel, it might float, but then at the main disconnect, your bonding jumper between neutral and ground will bond, and then that ground wire going to your two ground rods or one should be present. Intersystem bonding bridge bars are also something that have been happening over the last seven, eight years. And then also looking at the fact that you have to have two ground rods now in code for the last six years. And the other thing that you have to keep in mind is that if your cold water is not bonded, that's a good thing to have bonded. Why? Because I can name 10 devices in a home or appliances that where electricity and water meet. I've seen a microwave just recently in an oven also freestanding have water and electricity mixed just for humidity so the meat's not dry. And you also look at your refrigerator or your dishwasher or your, your garbage disposal or how about a little uh, wine refrigerator or maybe you've got a, a humidifier in your furnace. Uh, maybe you've got a boudet toilet, hot water heater, uh, electric base water heat with, with uh, serpentine pumps 
pumps downstairs. How about just a well pump? Um, I could go on and on and on on the list to show you. There's a lot of things, uh, steam showers and hot tubs, sorry, I forgot about those, where electricity and water meet to make that appliance heat the water or pressurize and push the water. So keep in mind that we want to make sure that our house is bonded. Article 250.53 talks about secondary grounding, and Article 250.50 talks about your primary grounding. Article 250.94 talks about your system bonding bridge bar, and your ground rods, of course, to and present. And then Article 250.64 talks about what size grounding for main grounding electrode, and 250.122 talks about your secondary circuits behind the breaker. It could be a sub-panel or your main breaker. But point of the matter is, is that all circuits are supposed to have a grounding. Now, if you have pipe, you want to make sure that's bonded as well. MC cable or any other type of plastic pipe, Carflex or Smurf tubing, ENT pipe. A lot of this stuff still has to have an EGC ground present through that conduit or flex in order to ground the equipment. Keeping in mind that the more you are grounded, probably the more static shock you're going to get if your carpets are old and dirty with soap, as of also dog hair, and I'm wearing a flannel shirt today. So I might as well take a balloon, rub it all over me, and then boom, I could static charge. Now I'm not advocating to go underneath your axle of your car and put a drag chain strap, right? They do that on equipment such as semis and tractors that carry heavy equipment, as well as hazardous um, equipment, for instance, my brother's pole nitrogen. So that kind of tractors are gonna be you all listed for their own standard, but if you're making your own trailer and wiring it, you could put a simple bond strap. I wouldn't drag it big chain. I assume over time it's gonna keep sparking. Maybe there's a metal strap, a flat metal strap you can just pull and attach to with some self-tappers at the bottom of your trailer axle if you're concerned about that. But man-made items such as uh, these that we're talking about, how about just the acts of God? The natural ability for electrocution it has nothing to do with me and that would be basically lightning so in all the present codes beforehand that I'm aware of since 1999 and I might be wrong I was got in the trade in 96 as an appliance tech in 99 as an electrician point of the matter is it used to be called SPD surge protective device for the whole house was article 285 or commercial buildings but they did change that this year in 2020 and they are now calling it a voltage protection for an overcurrent voltage or over voltage spike. So we would basically call that an article 242 now. And it's interesting how they jump that around, but it is true. A whole house surge protective device is very wise. Every year, once a year, usually in spring, I get a call based upon the fact that we've lost a neutral because we have a lot of runoff from snow and extra rain and that ground shifts and whatever that neutral was with this mineralized soil we have out here, definitely gets in and corrodes it and then boom I've got a complaint that the house is spiking or other areas of the house are just off so it is never something to mess around they hey you know what's just one light freaking out look if you all most of your lights in your house are freaking out it is a possibility that you have a major issue right away do not forget about that but keep in mind static shock can still hurt someone if you have a pacemaker it could still put you on the floor or kill you there are ways of making sure things are grounded properly. Maybe your circuit just was disconnected as remodeled and you never continue the EGC ground throughout the rest of that brand circuit for circuit 24 for the bedroom. I don't know. But the point of the matter is, is making sure the ground is there and present. Again, this YouTube video is for electricians. Some homeowners are definitely really educated and understand an electrical engineer mind that this is how you protect. And if you know how to use a meter, you can simply check your, check your potential. Remembering that the, the third or fourth wire in most residential for that bare copper or insulated is typically not counted. So when I say a three wire, I'm talking about a number 14 or 12 three wire. A black and a red ungrounded conductors as well as a neutral grounded conductor. But some of the older homes have a BX cable or they have knob and two or they just have cloth wire that has no EGC ground. We don't count that. So when we're talking slaying or professionally, we're basically taking off that ground wire. So when we are talking about our EGC, we're going to say 3 plus 1 or 2 plus 1. Again, keep in mind, you cannot just go change your receptacles out because you have two wires and you want to just basically have a non-ground. You cannot do that. 
Article 4.6 talks about this. If you change out that plug, you need to also include Article 250.130 and how do we EGC ground protect that now? Now we are allowed to run a separate ground wire for that circuit. You can jump off of another circuit near it if it has it or just run it separate. But keeping in mind Article 250 talks about how to protect that EGC ground conductor from ever being ripped out or damaged. Usually it's smaller than a number six. But if it's gonna be hidden, you probably wouldn't even have to worry about that if you're fishing the wall. So again, sorry this video is a little long. I've got to get off the, here my, uh, we do, my drop box is not like us having it super long. I am not driving, my beautiful wife is driving. Say hi, Alicia. She never gets on the videos, but I got her today. And these are my kiddos. And we are heading to soccer, which they are shy. Michaela, you see her work with me all the time. Hi, I can, say hi, Michaela. Anyway, she won't. So keep in mind, there's a couple different reasons of why we ground and protect, but again, static shock does not mean you're being electrocuted. Thanks.